Hey friends, Paul here. If you love books, please give this video a thumb up. I always check out books from my public library before I purchase anything. I didn't used to always do that, and then I had books that I hardly ever read. But use your public library card and support your library. I volunteer at my public library occasionally doing science projects and stuff. So just want to get a shout out for public libraries at the outset of this video. And I really wanted to get this book in particular. So what I do then is go online and I buy used books. And this has happened more than once and I posted videos on this kind of thing. So I'll be linking to some of those within this video. But what happens sometimes guys when you purchase online books Sometimes they're not in the condition as advertised. This was, I'm not going to mention the seller because they were, they made good on it and refunded me the purchase. But they listed this book in good condition where the front cover is torn. There is actually dry rot. Look at the binding is totally separating from the back of the book. Not to mention that there's extensive water damage along the spine. So it is not in good condition. I took a couple pictures of it. I sent it through eBay. And immediately the seller reimbursed me the cost of the book. So they made good on that. And, you know, props to them. But I'm going to restore this book here in this video and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this process because I've done this kind of video before and I know that sometimes they get good views. So stay with me while I do this. First, when you get a book, this book, you can see it's got a nice shiny surface on it. Well, that's because I cleaned it twice with white vinegar. And guys, whenever you buy something used or through the goodwill, especially you parents out there who are on a budget shopping for your kids, buying used toys and stuff, please disinfect everything you get that's used with white vinegar. It kills something like 98% of all bacteria. It's, it's non-toxic. And what I do is I just hit that with a rag and I'll do that a couple times because if someone's owned a book like this and they've been thumbing their grubby fingers all over it, especially if it's dirty and you show it's just it's just not coming from a clean environment, definitely clean any surface of any book, toy, or anything you used a couple times. I love white vinegar. You can also use a uh, mild dish detergent for the same effect. It's separating right there from the actual binding. So what I'm going to do is thread a bead of this archival glue right down that seam and take your time guys do this carefully I'm not going to rush this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do it so just stay with me if you're into this stuff those of you who are not into books have probably already left this video but those of you who enjoy this stuff are probably still with me and then what I'll do is I will actually pull away the back um, seam there and let gravity do its work. Do you see how that glue is sucking down into that seam there? And then you may want to run a finger very gently down that seam as well. That is certainly going to... And, and when you fold this over to dry it, that's also going to help keep that page intact. In the front cover here, there is some separation right there. It's not nearly as bad as the back cover. But I'm still going to hit that with a bead of adhesive right down there. So I want to shore up the spine of this book. As mentioned, it's taken, um, it's got some fraying in it. And so you want to square up a good measurement of that, get it pretty accurate, and then take your scissors, snip that off and see how close you are. That's pretty much perfect. And then you want to see the 
um, dimension of how much that's going to cover. And I just kind of eyeball it here. Don't let it stick. You see how that wants to stick? But I think I'm, I'm very safe with at least about a third of an inch on each side of the spine. So if I start right about here, and again, get right to the edges because that's where it's taken the most wear and tear, and, and keep it straight. Make sure you're straight on this seam at a 90 degree angle with the spine. So I rub that in, take out any air bubbles. This is actually kind of a fun exercise to do, you know, it's, it's enjoyable and I enjoy making these videos for you guys. And then come around the spine, same thing, press your thumb in, take out any air bubbles. And you can notice that coming around the back, I like to work from the middle outward this way. You can see that's actually worked out perfectly. I really appreciate you guys tuning into my videos. It means a lot. It also means a lot if you would please share these. I'm not on Facebook. So if you would share this stuff with anybody who, who's into do-it-yourself book projects on Facebook, it would mean the world to me uh, to get that much more exposure. Personally, I'm on a quest to get 10,000 subscribers on this channel. I'm coming up on 9,000. I've been on here since 2013. I love books. Um, I'm just going to reach over here and grab a book that I see in the corner that I picked up the other day, The Life of Harriet Beecher Stowe, you know, with gold leaf, an 1800s book. I mean, I've always been into books. Actually, I have a master's degree in literature, so that's a little personal anecdote about me. And I love the internet, but books always have a warm place in many of our hearts. And if you're one of those people, please give this video a thumb up and post your comments below and share this video with your friends who like to keep a library of books and resurrect paperback books in particular on the cheap without, I mean, like a book like this, honestly. Other people would just, you know, throw it away with a dry, rotted spine. But with a few simple materials... You can keep these things in good working order for years to come. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great day.